All right. So now we're going to continue talking about functions. And I um, just want to remind you that we're you know, not forcing us to plow ahead, as is the teacher's instinct. Uh, we're dwelling on this function thing. We realize we've already talked about this a lot, and I'm going back to talk about it again, which means it must be important. It must be really important. Okay? It's, a, it's important to me that you guys understand this. And guys. Okay? That you understand this. Okay? Not only is it important to me, it's important to you, because I know that as we move on, and if you don't have a really good grasp of what functions are, and they're a fairly simple thing, um, then it's just going to be harder for you. And I don't want this to be hard for you. Okay? I don't want it to be harder than it has to be. If we can spend some time and I can really get you to understand what a function is, and you can understand what, what all functions are, you can understand what a graph is, you can understand a lot of things more easily. But you have to realize that what I'm telling you is a very important thing. Okay? Like I told you before, I have a degree in mathematics. I know what it takes to understand it. Uh, at least at this level, um, and, and higher levels, and uh, I want to help you with that. That's why we're doing it. We don't have loads of homework, right? I'm taking the time to make sure that we get this. So I hope that you guys are valuing this time as well. Um, so we're gonna talk about functions kind of as a general um, topic, and um, make sure that that's pretty well taken root and talk about functions some more. Okay. Uh, so that's really important. All right, so I'm just uh, going through these and I'm gonna, I'm gonna write a few of these examples down that I got. Here's one. sounds simple, right? But it's, it's fairly profound. And as we go on to try and write functions, this is what chapter 5 is getting into, and what we're trying to get into a little bit. Uh, as we write functions, if we can think about, hey, this, this thing, this x, takes in values, okay? Those values typically will have like some kind of a unit, some kind of a meaning in the real world, and then the output will be the result of of that inputs, you know, being messed around with, being multiplied by something, something added to it, and so on. Okay. So this one's pretty clear. Something goes in for x, the input, and then once you do all of this stuff, you multiply it by five and you add sixteen, out comes something, the output. Okay. Remember, we spent a lot of time. I asked you, I gave you a function like this, and said, what does this function do? What's something that this function can do? Someone give me a specific example of what it can do? Given what Alex just told us, the reason why it is a function. So let's watch it be a function. Can you show me it to be a function? Put zero in for x. Okay, put zero in for x. Okay, has the function done anything yet? No, right? Richard did that. Put zero into the function. Now, what does the function do? And the output would be for zero, it would be what? 16. Be 16. Okay. Real simple. You put in zero, function takes over, gives you 16. Because it multiplies it by 5 and adds 16. Okay. Uh, one more example of what this function can do. Mm 
Bryce? Put two in for x. Put two in for x, okay? Has the function done anything yet? No, it hasn't. For, or, uh, Bryce did that, right? So then what does the function do? Gives you 26. That's what the function does, right? The function multiplies 2 by 5, giving you 10, then it adds 16, and the output is y, or it's, it's uh, 26 in this case. Okay? Now, I picked another one. I thought this was pretty interesting. Is that a function? Why is it a function? Yeah, if you put something in for x, it doesn't explicitly say y is going to be this, like y is on one side and everything else is on the other. But if you put in something for x, does that mean y has to be something very specific? If it's not, then you won't get 8. You need to get 8, OK? So this is an example of a function as well, right? It doesn't look like your typical function where there's this side that it clearly something goes in and clearly on the other side something comes out. All right? Can we make it that way? Can we rewrite it so it's more classic? So that it looks like this side's output, this side is the input. Yeah? Okay. Well, how do we do that? Yes? Okay, so we have we want to isolate this y. It's multiplied by 4, also 3x is being added to it. But if we cancel out this 3x by subtracting 3x, 3x minus 3x is 0. So on this side, the only thing left is 4y. So we just subtract 3x from the other side because it's an equation and we have to keep it balanced. Now we have 4 times y. We don't want 4 times y. We don't want just y by itself. How do we cancel out that 4? 5 by 4. Dividing by 4, taking 1 fourth of this side. 1 fourth of this would just be 1y, or 4 divided by 4 is 1. 1 times y is just y. So we divide this, divide this side by 4. Okay. We spent some time talking about this, whether or not we should divide both of these things by 4. Yes, we should. Right? If we want to have like two separate terms, divide both of these things by 4. Because if here's a good check. If, you, if you're thinking, that you need someone to tell you if what you did was correct. All you need to do is ask yourself, can I reverse what I just did? If I, uh, if I just separated things, can I put them back together and get this? If I just put them together, can I take them apart uh, and go back? Can I take what I have, go back, and have what I started with? Can we do that? Can we put these together and, it, and this is what we should get? Well, what do we have here? We have two. Two what? Two things. They're both what kind of numbers? They're fractions. Can we subtract this fraction from that? Jake, it looks like you say yes. Why can we put these two fractions together? The subtraction. Is there the common denominator, right? We need common denominator when we add or subtract fractions. Okay. Because we need to compare these things, they need to be the same thing. If we're going to put them together, they both need to be fourths. You know, can't put fourths together with thirds. It doesn't make any sense, right? If I had some fourths here and two fourths, and I wanted to add some thirds to that, I can't add two fourths and one third because what would I say that they were? It doesn't make any sense. Right? They need common denominators. We need to compare the same kind of things. So we have common denominators. We can put them together. If we put them together, we're going to combine the, the numerator. So with this operation here, the subtraction, 8 minus 3x, all over 4. This many fourths. Okay. If you want to convince yourself of that, just plug something in for x. You know, a few different times and see, it doesn't come out the same. Put in a 2. See what you get when you, put, when you combine them, put a 2 in there. See what you get there. Are they the same thing? Yeah, they will be. Okay. Then we can simplify 8 over 4 as 2. X. If we want to write it as mx plus b, we could write it this way. Okay. The thing I like about what it looked like originally, this guy right here, is that it's, it's not locked into this idea that a function looks like y equals mx plus b. y equals mx plus b is not the definition of a function. It's not what all functions look like. Okay. Any function that takes an input and gives you an output is a function. What it, what it does, okay? And as
as long as now function is a very special thing, so it has to give you an input, it has to give you an output for an input, and just the, the small little condition is when it gives you an output, it only gives you one output. Okay? It doesn't give you zero, it doesn't give you two outputs, it gives you one output. Okay? That's a function. Okay. So let's see. Let's just look quickly again. So without giving me y equals mx plus b, those aren't allowed right now. I just want an example of you know, two more examples of them. Okay, without saying y equals number times x plus other number. Give me a different example of the function. No, I'm saying that it, it shouldn't, you shouldn't think that it has to look like this. <coughs> every one of those quizzes, and this is okay, but every one of those quizzes or, or reviews um, looked like that, except for the uh, one other one that I put up there. This does not look like that to start with. It does not look like y equals mx plus p. Okay. This person's showing me that it, it's, it's possible that they don't, like they realize it doesn't have to look like y equals mx plus b. So, to reject one with this form, so we should say, come up with another tiny bit that just looks different. So what's your example? Would 10 work? Yeah. Sure. Can you think of two numbers that you can put for x and y that you'll get 10? What's that? Zero and two. Put in zero for x and two for y, you'll get 10. Any other one? Okay, so just switch it around. Since both of these can just be multiplied by a number to get 10, those two other things will be fine. Okay, and what Alexis is doing uh, is just like these, specifically these two, she just found, we'll find later that they're called x and y intersects. Because we'll talk about that later. Zane, what do you, what do you have? Never mind. No? No. Okay. Other solutions might be a little hard to find. Um, but if I were to put in 3 for x, is there some y out there that would have to exist? to solve the equation, I put two times three plus five times y equals 10. Isn't there some y that has to work in this equation? Yes or no? Or? Yeah. yeah why, what makes you say yes, there has to be a y that works? Because if you really have to, you can just put zero in for y to get rid of five. Well, if I put a zero in for y, though, what would I get? I would get six. And here we get 10, and here this would give me nothing. I know, but I'm just saying, like, if, if you could have the two, mm -hmm. and then, like, put 5 in instead of 3, and then it would just equal 10, you could just get rid of the 5. Yeah, that's true. We did that here. Yeah. But 
when x is 3, in that, like, specifically in that case, is there a y that would have to work here? I'm not asking you to figure out what it is, tell me what it is, I'm just asking, do, does it exist? Would it have to exist? Who says yes? If there is some y out there, it's got to exist. Everybody's got to vote on this, okay? So yes, there is a y somewhere out there in the universe, it's got to solve this equation. Okay? Who believes? No. There's not necessarily a y that's going to solve. Maybe you'll find out that it's not possible. Okay, so we all feel like there's got to be some y. Could we figure out what that y would have to be? Yeah. Yeah? How would we do that? Mm. Well, 2 times 3 is 6. Yes. So then you would subtract the 6 from the 10. OK. So we get a 4 over there. What is that y that must exist? It's 4 fifths. 2 times 3 plus 5 times 4 fifths equals 10. 2 times 3 is 6. 5 over 1 times 4 over 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. We get 4. And that is 6 plus 4 is 10. So, yeah. And any x we pick or any y we pick, the other has to exist. Okay, that's true of, of this function. Um, good. So, our all functions do not have to look like this. This is a pretty popular form to have right now as we talk about linear functions, mx plus b. It's very easy because it's, or it's very common because it's very easy to graph it when it's written that way. But we're not, we're not worried even about that right now. Um, so, last class, what did we, what did we end with? What was the last thing we were working on? Twice? Coming up with new functions, like different ones, weird ones, or just... I think we got... No, we definitely got past that. We did, did that kind of individually in our groups, but then as a, as a class we went on to look at another function, and I asked you to, to go home and try and figure out this function. Function that represented what? Say? More kind of like a parking meter. A parking meter, yeah. We were, we were looking at that parking meter. Uh, what about this parking meter? What do we know about it specifically? Beside? You put 75 cents in, uh -huh. and then you get an hour out of it. Mm -hmm. And that's what we know, right? 75 cents in, one hour out. Input and output, so it's a function, right? And if you put in 75 cents, you always get an hour, you're not gonna get 15 minutes, it's not random, there's not multiple kinds of outputs that we can get, it's just definitely one hour comes out of it, right? It's working properly, right? Then I asked you to figure out a function that will take other amounts of money, not just 75 cents, but 15 cents, or 25 cents, or whatever amount that I decide that I wanna put into this function, and it'll tell me how many hours I get, okay? If I put in 75 cents, I get one hour, so if I put in 25 cents, well, I should get less than an hour, right? So uh, somehow the output of the function should tell me this, all right? So um, hopefully you all worked on it. If you did, then this will go really smoothly and well, and if you didn't, then it's just, it'll be not much more But what I want you to do is get into your groups now, and we'll, continue to discuss that function and